I'm sure that I will drive a lot faster than James Bond. Different to, you know, maybe James Bond's uh, everyday life. It's a mixture of science fiction and science fact. Excite people and uh, maybe surprise people as well. Would Sebastian Vettel make a good James Bond? There's just one thing I need. A four-time world champion on the tale of Her Majesty's most famous secret agent. For years, Aston Martin has supplied James Bond's cars. Now, the British luxury brand is trying its hand at Formula One again. The new car was presented by drivers Lance Stroll and Sebastian Vettel, and the man who plays Bond on screen. Here's a word from Bond, James Bond. Hello, Daniel Craig here. I just want to send a massive congratulations to all of Aston Martin for getting back onto the F1 grid for the first time since 1960. And what a lineup of drivers. Sebastian Vettel, four times world champion. Out of the two of you, who's James Bond? We'll <laughs> <laughs> both be, but, uh, we we'll both we be both. feeling like 007 behind that wheel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of buttons. That's and it, machine actually. guns on the yeah. side of the yeah. chassis to eliminate the competition. It's a big difference <laughs> from the previous cars that I drove, and I think it's new for this year, all the buttons inside the cockpit. For 007, Aston Martin DB5s are kitted out with machine guns, smoke machines, and rotating license plates. All the things an agent needs to shake off his rivals. The DB5 made its cinema debut in 1964 in Goldfinger. It was the start of a beautiful friendship. Siegfried Tescher has written several books on the relationship between James Bond's cars and the automotive industry. I think that without James Bond, Aston Martin would have gone under. When the first film came out, the car had a sensational effect. It was the ultimate men's toy. Suddenly, they had so many orders they couldn't keep up. Sammy Davis Jr. wrote a blank check and said, give me that car, I have to have it. And many pop stars and celebrities immediately ordered an Aston Martin. Paul McCartney bought one. Mick Jagger bought one. James Bond driving his Aston Martin DB5 always got away, no matter who was chasing him. Until 1994, that is, when a red Ferrari showed up in the rearview mirror in Goldeneye. The production company had decided to build the Italian motoring legend into its storylines. They came here, we discussed the use of the car. The car was in a, in a James Bond style, but not dangerous, with a nice woman, and that is important. Still, a crucial adjustment was needed to win over Ferrari to the idea. On this occasion, the, the woman protagonist drove a Ferrari and overtakes James Bond, so she won. That was good for us. The less it is, even an Aston Martin doesn't overtake a Ferrari. In this Formula One season, Sebastian Vettel is determined to break with that convention. I'm confident we can overtake more than one Ferrari next uh, or this season, so uh, yeah, let's see how we get on, but uh, you know, um, I'm not uh, too bothered about Ferrari or not. I think uh, much more I'm uh, looking on our side that we are able to extract the maximum uh, of our potential. So uh, working together closely with the team, trying to improve the car, looking, you know, um, being obsessed about trying to find a detail that helps us to improve. Formula One cars are changing all the time to keep up with technological developments. These modern racing cars are at the cutting edge. So were James Bond's cars. Ian Fleming, who created the character, made sure of that. 
Fleming had a thing for cars and technology, and he was happy to get expert advice. What's possible today, and what might be possible in the future? And one of the ideas was a radar tracker. The forerunner to a modern navigation system. Sometimes Bond briefly swaps his old Aston Martin Classic for a modern-day car, usually when futuristic technology is required. He once drove a BMW by remote control in a high-speed car chase around a parking garage. There's still no such thing as a remote-controlled car operated by cell phone, but the idea is there. Is it theoretically possible? It's a mixture of science fiction and science fact. Could it work? Yes. Let's take the idea a little bit further. And this sleek, wedge-shaped Lotus Esprit came in handy when Bond needed a car that could go underwater. The production designer happened to see this car parked on the studio grounds and said, if we need a submarine car, I can make something of that one. Once, just once, James Bond eschewed technology and slummed it in a Renault 2CV in For Your Eyes Only. I feel a bit like James Bond myself, but it's not as if James Bond was on his own. At first, it was his partner Melina who drove. But you got the feeling that the car could handle all sorts of terrain, even off-road. That was part of the idea, to give rivals the slip with the 2CV on difficult terrain. It was a one-off, not exactly typical James Bond. What is typical Bond is that the films have served as launch pads for other Aston Martin models or testing grounds for prototypes. The DB10 was specially developed by Aston Martin's engineers for Spectre. Now, though, it's back to motor racing, in which the British brand has a proud history. Numerous victories in the Le Mans 24-hour race testify to that. In the late 1950s, Aston Martin also spent two seasons in Formula One. And now, it's back again. People are very excited, obviously, bringing Aston Martin back to Formula One after 61 years. It's great, uh, you know, the team is based in the UK, uh, in England, so uh, obviously all the British people are very excited about the return. Well, obviously it's, uh, there's a great heritage in the brand of Aston Martin. Uh, it's very British and uh, obviously James Bond uh, works for the, uh, uh, for the Queen. Reason enough for James Bond never to drive a Ferrari. Wherever Bond goes, the Aston Martin DB5 is never far away. For example, there were 10 DB5s at the set of No Time to Die in the Italian city of Matera. Bond has always been faithful to his Aston Martin. He's got nothing else to love, because all his personal relationships have ended or died over the years. He's a widower. He has no luck with women. Or women have no luck with him. There is one thing he loves, till death do us part, as it were. And that's his Aston Martin DB5. The beloved Aston Martin gets put to the test again in the latest film. Action is the key to Bond's success at the box office. And the most spectacular car chases are down to the stuntmen who take over from Daniel Craig when the going gets tough. Stuntmen are the unsung heroes of the James Bond franchise. Without them, James Bond films would never have been what they are. 
Sebastian Vettel drives his Aston Martin himself, no matter what the conditions. Is it just a matter of time until his Formula One car, the Aston Martin AMR21, makes its first appearance in a James Bond film? Well, I don't know. I think they, there is a new film outstanding for last year, which got postponed to this year. So I don't know if probably it will be in the next one. It just doesn't make sense. The idea of a James Bond film is that he's put under pressure. He gets into tricky situations and has to defend himself. I can't think of anything more boring than a Formula One car in a James Bond film. It all depends on the Formula One car's role in the movie. Well, I'm not James Bond, and I'm sure that I will drive a lot faster than James Bond does. Uh, I think uh, we both will, as we are better drivers than James Bond. No question about that. Sebastian Vettel is likely to drive the Aston Martin faster than anyone else before him. Whether he can steal the show from James Bond, that's another story.